You know you don't have an argument, at least a biblical argument, when all you can do is rely on anecdotal evidence. When you say something that's happening and you attribute it or equate it to a move of the spirit and you can't find any scriptural backing, that is the very definition of unbiblical. It is not in the Bible. There is no biblical account of it happening. There are those that will try to say that there are biblical accounts, but they're not. And as a matter of fact, when you go and look at the examples they give, you'll see that we are, we are treading on thin ice. Now, when you get someone who's supposed to be a scholar who will say that there is, uh, I think it's worth noting. But I want to start off by listening to, I think this is John Hagee's son, who talks about being slain in the spirit. And notice, pretty light on evidence. And notice his, his use. He's slain in the spirit describes individuals who fall under the power of God. And it actually comes from the Bible. There are multiple occasions where the presence of God appears and individuals were not able to stand because of the weight of of his presence. One of the places that you find this in the Bible is that when the Sanhedrin guard came to arrest Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane and they asked, are you Jesus of Nazareth? He said, I am. And the Bible says they fell as dead men. The power of God was so heavy that the physical human being could not stand in its presence. Ask yourself. Now, let's think about this for a second. As a matter of fact, let's go to this passage. This is in John 18, 5. Then they answered to him, Jesus, Jesus, the Nazarene, he said to them, I am he. And Judas also, who was betraying him, was standing there. So when he said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. A couple of things. If this is, by the way, this cannot be an example of being slain in the spirit. Why? Because one, the men didn't have the spirit. And then two, none of these men that fell were godly. But guess what? There were some other men there who were godly men, though they weren't filled with the spirit. They were there. And so if this is an account of someone being slain by the spirit, by the presence of God being there so heavily, why didn't the men of God, you know, the disciples that were there, why didn't they fall? They threw, they were ready to draw their swords, uh, but they didn't fall. The power of God didn't affect the actual believers, the followers of Christ, but it affected the non-believers. That makes absolutely no sense. So what it is, is you've got someone that's looking for an example, and this is not an example. They weren't believers. They didn't have the spirit. They did. They weren't saved. And then the people that were saved, the people that were followers of Christ, they didn't fall. Ask yourself if you've ever seen anyone collapse because of grief. Have you ever watched a soccer game and seen somebody miss a goal and somebody in midfield 50 yards away falls flat on their back and clutches their chest as if they're having a major cardiac event just because a ball of hot air flew over a bar? Now, that makes no sense either because whenever you, and I've been in those cases where you're in the field, you, you know, uh, a battle, let's say, on in the sports field or something happening, uh, and you just kind of fall over, you just bend over, what have you. Well, those you can control. You can stand up and walk away. It should. And now, there are there times where someone is overcome by emotion and they fall, if they faint. Sure. Do we attribute that to the spirit? No, we do not. Now, if you're going to say that this is somebody being slain by the spirit, in other words, the spirit is the cause, you're going to have to actually give a biblical account. And so, let's go to one of the foremost authorities in the charismatic movement who is supposed to be the scholar, and let's listen to what he has to say about this. And you're going to notice pretty light on Scripture. As a matter of fact, he's going to admit that. God, that hasn't changed. I know some of you have a hard time with this because it's outside your paradigm, but God is often outside our paradigm. And if it's not against, if it's not spoken against in the Word, there's a difference between unbiblical, meaning it's contrary to the Bible, contrary to the Word, and extra-biblical, meaning it's not explicitly mentioned in the Word. Now, I disagree with his with his terminology, but the fact of the matter is it's not in the Bible and he's admitting that. So you want to say that people have a, a problem with it not being uh, in our paradigm or goes against our paradigm. No, it goes against what the scripture says. If you're going to say this is a move of the spirit and every time we see the move of the spirit in the Bible, we don't see this happening. Then you can't tell us or make us believe or accept that this is a move of the spirit. You're supposed to be the scholar. Why aren't you looking to the scriptures scholar to tell us why this is something that we either should or should not do? the word and the idea of people being overpowered by the presence of god is certainly a common concept in the word plus everyone responds and reacts differently now he says it's a common concept in the word but we don't see it let me just go over a couple of passages because they bring up certain places As a matter of fact, let's go to the old Testament. let's go to daniel first uh in daniel let's go 8 17 so he came near me near to where i was standing and when i when he came i was frightened and fell on my face but he said son of man understand that the vision pertains to the end times. Now, a couple of things. When someone wants to use this, this is not being slain in the spirit. What is this being slain in the angel? But by the way, he wasn't slain. He's understanding, he's hearing, he's coherent, and he's just, he's, he, this is him doing so on his own. 
This isn't the Holy Spirit. This isn't God. This is an angel. So that couldn't apply either, right? So that's one example that we can go ahead and mark off as an actual example. And over the years, I've prayed for thousands of people and seen them fall flat on their face and others fall on their back. And I've seen them touched equally the same way. So again, it's such an odd thing to me that people would get in an uproar over this. You know, send me a video. How can this, you call this person a brother? Look, all these people falling as he's ministering. That's supposed to mean they're not a brother. There's, that's supposed to mean they're not saved. That's supposed to mean they're guilty of some fanaticism or emotionalism. Show, show me, show me just here. I'm a, Bible, I'm a word person. I'm a Bible person. Like many of you. No, you're not a Bible person. You couldn't be because you wouldn't be advocating for this. Now, a person falls out or what have you. No, that doesn't mean they're not saved, but it means not being, the spirit is not moving on them because we don't see that. That's all it means. Many of you show me in the Bible where it says judge by the, yeah, test the spirits. How? Well, you look, you look at the word. You look at the scriptures. Now, he's not going to look at the scriptures. As a matter of fact, what he's going to do to try to prove his point, he's going to ask people for their testimonies. Biggest thing, you look at doctrine. If doctrine's not the issue, if Jesus is being preached, the Jesus of the Bible, if he's being preached, then you look at the effect it has on someone's life. So if Jesus is preached, then you can do anything. You can, I don't know, slap someone. You can go and have an affair with someone because at the service, Jesus was preached. No, there is an order to what we're doing. There's a reason for what we're doing. And no one yet has addressed why are these people falling out if they're slain by the spirit? What's the benefit for the body? Very simple. For a number of years, I was skeptical and, and, and I had all my reasons, but I, I actually couldn't quote scripture to that effect. I couldn't quote the Bible to that effect. And then over the years, I've prayed. I've seen the power of God come in dramatic ways. And, and way, you have to understand, you have to understand, I've been in meetings where someone's getting prayer, right? So I'm, I'm walking down an aisle to leave a building. So I am walking behind people in the aisle. So they're standing there, eyes closed, being prayed for. I'm walking behind them. Someone's been praying for them for a few minutes, hand on their forehead, quietly praying. They don't know I'm behind them. They don't hear I'm behind them. I'm not saying anything, but I just have to get by them. I barely put my hand on their back, boom, and they fall over. What, how'd that happen? Why'd that happen? Well, it's psychosomatic. I've been in places where just the mere touch of someone can move someone because they're looking for something. They want something to happen. As Paul says, you're zealous, you're desirous of the move of the spirit. And so when someone touches you or move up, anything can happen. It's just like when you're a football game or a basketball game. Why is someone who's normally calm, Bob in accounting, he's normally calm and quiet, but the football game, the basketball game, he is acting like a maniac. Is that his normal demeanor? No, because he's in an environment. If this is of God, if this is of the spirit, why does it only happen in certain environments? Why do people don't just fall out, I don't know, at, at, at court or when, there are, when they are applying for a job, when they're at an interview uh, in front of the police? We don't see that happening. We don't see these things happening in other places except in places where they know it's acceptable. I prayed for people that didn't believe it that were skeptics. I'm just going to shake their hand and the power of God's hit them and they fell to the ground and got up changed. How'd that happen? Where's the power of suggestion? I've you don't know what they were. For someone to say, well, this person had never been involved in this, they'd never been uh, associated with it, never seen it. Well, I'm not too sure. So again, you don't know that. And so I won't address that because I don't have to. All we've got to do is try, instead of trying to judge what they're doing, let's try to do, let's try to look at the scriptures. Don't judge what they're doing based on the fact that we don't know or as possible. Let's judge it based on the scriptures. As you said, test and see with how, how, with the scriptures. I've, I've been in circles where no one had ever seen it. And I, I, I wasn't expecting anything. Didn't say a word about falling, began to pray for leaders on the platform. They began to fall on their face, fall on their side, fall on their back. And people were shocked. They'd never seen it. I want you to hear some testimonies. And I want to ask you the question, who did this? Who was responsible for this? What Paulus is this? Dr. Brown, you pointed at me from about seven feet away at the altar at Brown. Now, you pointed at me, again, looking for someone's testimony instead of the scriptures. You pointed at me and, I, and this lady fell over. Do we see that in scripture? What it sounds is more like Benny Hinn-ish. Brownsville. I fell to the floor on my stomach. Oh, she fell on her face. I thought, oh no, I'm going to get stepped on or I need to get up. I could not. There was a huge hand on my back. Was it the devil who did that and gave her this love for Jesus and love for the lost? Or was it? The Holy Spirit. So the question is, what causes that? Well, how about just your thoughts, your wanting, your desire? But do we see that in scriptures? And there are other passages that they may turn to. They may turn to John in Revelation, where John in Revelation, the problem is in John in Revelation, 
He's conscious. He is bowed over. Same thing with Saul. Saul is coherent. He's understanding what's happening. And so you can't point to that. There is no passage. And if all you have is some anecdotal evidence, then you don't, and you don't have the Bible, well, then we are to do what? We are to, we are to reject it. Amen.